Welcome to Off the Record, a candid, casual conversation about life, culture, and church. And today we want to continue that conversation. Parents, it is summertime. Yeah. The greatest time for your kids as a parent. It's a challenging, wonderful time as you got your kids 24-7. And so today we want to talk a little bit about what can we do with our kids this summer? How can we leverage this time? And so in order to help me do that, we've got our own Julie McFarlane, our children's director. Julie, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I know summer was always great for me because I homeschooled. And so I already had them 24-7. And so summer was like, shoo, now we can just do the fun stuff. But I know that's not everyone's experience. So hopefully we can give you a few ideas, talk about our experiences and and. Maybe we'll have a great summer together. Well, today we brought in some more experts. We Since did. You and I, uh, our kids are growing. So That's summer right. is I know. awesome. Winter is awesome. I'll be, yeah. The beauty of empty nesting. But uh, there's a lot of us that are right in the midst of this. So right. why don't you introduce who we got with us today to have this conversation? Yeah, uh, this is Natalie and Chris Corso. Uh, actually, I'll let them introduce themselves, tell a little bit about who they are, what they do, where they are. Uh, we are Natalie and Chris Corso. Natalie, your uh, voice is so deep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been married for 16 years, and we have th- we are blessed with three children. Great. What are their ages? Uh, 12, 10, and 7. seven. So you're in the thick of it, as Love it. Brian would say. Okay, and Jenna and Brad? And we are Brad and Jenna Clark. Uh, we've been married for 15 and a half years, and we have two girls, 11 and 8. Okay, so the only thing we aren't represented is preschoolers, but we'll we'll work it out because we all had one, right? Or two or three. All right, so... Let's talk about summer. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Because I think it's always a great time uh, to really create those, I always say those... You know, those lifelong memories and those life-changing moments that we have. So I'd love to hear a little bit. What was maybe one of your favorite, as a child, family memories or something your family did every summer that, that still sticks with you? Julie, how about you? What did your family like to do? I know. Well, I mean, we did a lot of things, but the one thing I remember uh, still to this day is we met um, my, because, you know, we didn't have lots of money, so we would all purchase, purchase. Yeah, we purchased a beach home. We would rent a beach home with extended family, and so we would all go there once a year. And we did it every year. My grandmother was there. It was just a great time of connecting, and we would play games with cousins and and be on the beach and I would drive everybody crazy wanting to play the mermaid game over and over and over and if they're listening they're just nodding yes they remember those days huh? yeah um but that was and my dad always made homemade ice cream every year it was a big deal he would make banana ice cream is so amazing so one I do of the remember for you is the tradition the tradition kind of yeah of doing the same things over and over yep yep correct. Brad how about you growing up what was one of your family memories Oh, well, you know, I think uh, we we used to. Uh, well, I grew up on a in, in an island nation uh, in New Zealand, and um, and we used to spend a lot of time in summer uh, at the beach. So uh, fishing. Um, my dad had a boat, um, so we used to go out and um, have competitions trying to catch the biggest fish, and um, just spend time doing that. Uh, That's a pretty amazing... That's awesome. I would love to be able to say I was in an island nation, and so I fished into the ocean every... Yes? Who caught the biggest fish? What's your biggest fish story? Oh, gosh. You know, uh, I used to catch the most fish, probably not the biggest fish, but, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, one day... Um, dad and I, between us, we both um, wrestled this um, this yellowfin tuna that was wow. like, I think it was like 60 kilos. So oh, I'm not really? sure. It was like 100 and, 130 pound or something like that. It was really, really big. It was it was about as big as I was at the time. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah, that was that was definitely the biggest one. And that is a memory. You knew that. It's pretty cool. It's amazing. Jenna, how about you? Yeah, summer for me growing up, I grew up... Um, on the North shore of Oahu in Hawaii (laughs) on a beach. So yeah, could mostly walk my, all but one year of my childhood, we could walk to the beach. So it was, yeah, sun, sand, surf and fun. Shave ice is, you eat a lot of shave ice. It's 
flavored ice. You guys call it shaved ice or snow cones, but it's shave ice. Shave ice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, back to the real world <laughs> yeah. of Natalie and Chris. Say, I was going to say, well, we were on the west side of Cincinnati. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, my mom, every, my dad, he worked his butt off, but um, my mom was always home, and so every week she had something organized for us. Go to Once a week, we either go to a movie, uh, we would uh, go to Miami Whitewater, the park, and go bike riding, or kayaking or not well as paddle boats or uh or the, go to king's island holy smokes that's right and, Big but day. just but it was always once a week and so my sister and i always look forward to that and we just really had that as our as our backdrop we loved it in the summertime was it a certain day a week like if like it was always wednesday Friday? okay it was always wednesday yeah. there you go Wednesdays. Yes. So um, my father is from, well, both my parents are from Eastern Kentucky, but my father is from the Red River Gorge area. So we would spend almost every weekend in the summer visiting my grandparents and hiking. And so that was, that's some of my favorite memories, just hiking and being out outside in the woods and learning about the different trees and the leaves and whatever else he would teach us as we were hiking around. These are some amazing summer memories. Uh, well, I'm just sitting here listening, thinking we've got, you know, all these suggestions, but it sounds like all of us just really enjoyed being with our families without an agenda. Although that's not realistic to think the kids are going to be happy with that 24 seven. I'm sure if we were a fly on the wall, it'd be like some point your parents were driving a little nuts. So, but I am always reminded a lot of us, these family memories, these childhood memories were events that happened in the summer. Yeah. Not always just during the school year. And so I think that's the challenge we're going to talk about today. Encouragement for you as parents is these are the years and they are busy and it is a lot going on, but boy, these are the moments that you really have those memories where I caught the tuna with my dad, you know, or that we went hiking and we came across this thing, all these amazing things or Wednesday, right? In the coasters Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. or, uh, the beach and having some, what kind of ice? Shave ice? Shave ice. No, shave ice. No, yeah. I'm telling you, amazing stuff. No well, Julie, what would you give as maybe some suggestions? Let's start that conversation because we're looking at this summer. Yeah. What are we going to do? Now, it's a little unusual because we've had parents now who have, with COVID, right, we've spent never. a lot of time mm -hmm. with our kids, but now we're trying to really move back to some normalcy, trying to create those things. So right. what hope would you give for the parent who just feels overwhelmed? I don't know what to do. I've got yeah. the kids. Where do we well, go first of all, you got it. As we've heard, just being with them and enjoying free time where, you know, you can have those conversations is is good. However, it is always good to be prepared. I think I'm going to throw it to Jenna because you had mentioned you're the the social calendar planner person of Lexington. No. <laughs> well, out of our group, if you're familiar with our color series, right, Jenna's right. are red. Right, and right. so we turn to her great leadership and organizational skills and giftedness to well, one give of the, some thoughts. Yeah, one of the reasons is, is because there is some importance in being intentional and organized and creating the atmosphere and the time for those hiking moments and those wonderful moments. So how do you do that? Yeah. So in our family, um, you know, really we only get eight, eight weeks, 10 weeks of summer. So it's not a whole lot. So things that we utilize. And one thing I love, I know Brad and I grew up on islands. Um, but here in Kentucky, we moved here three years ago. We love the range and variety of camps that are available. And um, the last, you know, we were in Hawaii the last two years with COVID, but the first summer and then this summer, we're really looking at, okay, well, what are what am I wanting to do to enrich the girls' calendar year? And so utilizing summer camps and, and putting those in. So we've got some summer camps planned out, you know, like you're going to be outside. Um, and then when we go, we have specific activities bucket. We make lists. Mm -hmm. I'm a list person. And so we make lists and some things need to be booked in advance. So we make those lists and I ask the girls, what do you want to do? Um, and so we kind of have that planned out. A lot of downtime we have planned out as well. Like I'm not so regimented, I but I do plan the, the down days where we're not going to do um, anything. And then when we come back to Lexington, we'll have, you know, go back to, you know, one camp and then we'll have a break to get ready. Yep. Um, yeah. So we just make lists and have a calendar and plan the fun out. Yeah, that's good. So do you ever do anything at home? Like I'm thinking like um, cooking, baking contests oh. in your neighborhood or plays that the kids can do together and present or things like that that yeah. you're doing at home. Yeah, great question. Um, we do more like the last couple of years now that the girls have been older, we've had a couple, last couple of summers, we've had some books that we go through together. Um, 
like we we ha- we homeschooled last year and so we were able to go through like these god answer question things so i do a little bit of that um but honestly we spend a lot of time outside so i do like it we'll go outside for most of the day when we're in hawaii and um so yeah we'll kind of we don't do a whole lot of structured stuff at but home, outdoors, honestly. Yeah. yeah, we're outdoors a lot. And when we first moved to Kentucky, we had two pools at our apartment. And I mean, we were, I'm not exaggerating. We would be at the pool for eight hours each day and stuff just in the sun. Cause that's just where our family likes to be when the weather is nice. So we are a very outdoor family. We do a lot of hiking too. So, um, as far as structured stuff, I don't plan it like that detailed, right. Right. um, at home. I like to outsource. I'm really <laughs> good with outsourcing and delegating. So if I'm like, okay, we need more of that. I'll do like a VBS or, Hey, I want you to spend some more time working on that skill and I'll send them to that camp. Um, yeah. So we're not. And part is as a homeschooler teacher, I mean, you're really investing in educating all year long with your kids. So chance to have them hear a different voice and you little break, Brad, how about for you? How do, how do you try to make that distinction for, because we've got quite a few of our families that are homeschool or some variation of that. How do you, or do you try to make summer feel uniquely different then your school year, how does that look like for you guys? Um, well, well, some of the things that um, that the girls have been asking to do, and that we've um, we've done in the past, have been they want they want to camp like in the yard, um, so that they can um, like have like friends come and come and camp, or they want to do like sleepovers with um, with with their friends and the, um, from the neighborhood, and uh, they've been um, doing things like wanting to put on. Um, like fashion shows with with some of their um, uh, some of their friends in the neighborhood for us, and we'll we'll sit down and um, and all just watch and um, and some of the neighbors will all go out. I know um, last summer um, there was a, a bunch of them put on a um, a, a dance show um, in the neighborhood in the cul de sac. Everybody brought their um, their um, lawn chairs down and um, and parked up around the cul de sac and. These um these girls just put on this um this show, and uh, and so they do they do fun things like that. They're kind of unstructured. Um, they like to. Uh, we're going to do some things like um, camp on the trampoline. Um, nice. And uh, I I like to. I don't know if I necessarily like to bake, but I like. Um, I like the control that a recipe gives me, mm-hmm. um, and and so uh, so we'll do we'll do some things like um, um, teach the girls how to um, how to um, make bread or um, or do something fun like that. Sounds great. Those are Love great because those are the things you have a hard time sometimes doing in the the hectic pace of school and sports or whatever's going on. So those moments are great. What about you? I was going to say, Natalie, you've got a unique, you've got the kids that are home for summer, and Chris is a teacher, so he's home for the summer, so you really yes. have got to try we, to figure out how to make this work for everybody. We get Chris home with us for the summer, so we, um, you know, we're, we are fortunate to have him and do more adventures together. We like to do adventures together. But, um, well, I have some uh, some really good ideas. I was jotting these down because I was just, they were coming to my mind. Some of the things that I like to take advantage uh, of is, first off, a lot of the theaters in Lexington have cheap and free movies during yep. the weekdays and Saturday mornings for like two bucks, and they'll play like old run movies, so that's kind of cool. Um, we're a big board game family. Some of the, the really cool board games are really, really expensive, but Lexington Public Library lets you borrow them for free. A lot of people don't know that, so go online, check that out. Also, uh, fourth grade? fourth grade uh you can get in any national park your whole family for free if you have a fourth grader so uh if they're either going in or leaving and then uh this is a little bit of a drive with gas that kind of stinks but the dayton air force museum so about i don't know maybe two and a half hours from here is a free museum that has so i mean just historic planes from world war one two uh cold war it, it's fascinating and and it's free so it's kind of neat and then the last idea is um, there's a silly thing called geocaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, around Lexington, yes. there are hundreds and hundreds of these little boxes hidden with little knickknacks in them. And if you go on geocaching.net.com, Google it, you'll find it. Um, you can just do a scavenger hunt. We were doing it like once every other day during COVID. And it was a really cool thing, maintain social distance. And uh, got to have a lot of fun and be outside. But those are all pretty uh, cool, That's great. That's awesome. easy, cheap, free things. And Nellie, you had mentioned an idea earlier that you were excited about doing this year that I love. 
Sure. Um, it's actually, I can't claim it as my right. own, but my right. friend gave it to me. It's the playground tour. So yeah. just going, hitting up all the different playgrounds in Lexington, the, the different elementary schools, their different styles and all the parks. There's so many parks in Fayette County and they have different style programs. So that's something that's free, but you could do one a week, two a week, just kind of hop around and something fun. To do. Yeah. Natalie, what would you suggest uh, for just that mom who's just struggling to have the energy... <laughs> or the want to, or just, you know, they're just wore down and tired, uh, feeling a little hopeless. And even the thoughts of all these things seem amazing, but it seems overwhelming. Um, gosh, I don't know. I sometimes I, I would say don't be overwhelmed by trying to make all these grandiose plans, That's but really just good. pick one thing and do it. Mm -hmm. And then I think sometimes once you just get up and put the energy out there to do it, then you end up enjoying your time with your kids. So I think things can be overwhelming or you may think, oh, so-and-so is doing this or that. And and it's like we said earlier, it's not about how much money you spend, right. but having that connection with your kids and creating memories. Um, that's what's important to us is creating memories and having experiences. Um, that's so, so good because there's freedom to that. Sometimes you can hop on social media, you see the Pinterest, you see all these things. You're like, oh, these moms are amazing. They're doing these incredible family things. And you're like, you know, just going to Burger King and hanging out in the slide and getting some good old milkshakes. Yeah. And Oh, we did a lot of that. Yeah. I think the other thing um, that you can do is, is find another family to go with. You, you know, um, you have the opportunity to spend uh time doing an activity with your with your family um or the kids can all play together and you have an opportunity to connect with uh, with someone else and um and kind of share share that experience brad you guys have done an amazing job with that you shared just a little bit example even in your community what i love about you guys is you're just in with both feet doing life and you're connecting people with you there's always this fear if i ask my neighbor or ask somebody in a cul-de-sac they're gonna say no or think i'm weird sounds like you've experienced just the opposite. Like there is a need and a want for people to create genuine community. Has that been true of, of your experience here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, if I think about, I mean, and you know, Jenna, Jenna really is a gatherer and I think together we, we enjoy gathering, gathering people. And so, um, even last, last Friday they had, um, food trucks at, um, Shilado park. And so there were, I don't know, five or six families, um, from our neighborhood, all rode our bikes um, together um, down there um, and kind of sat around, um, spent time, the kids all played together. And uh, yeah, so it was, I, I think, if you're willing to ask people and invite people, then um, the ma majority of the time, what we've found is that um, people are very, very happy to be asked. And, you know, it's interesting because Chris and Natalie also um, have experience with that. I know you guys used to do neighbor night, right? Neighbor dinners, stuff like that. So you want to, can you talk about that a little bit? Forgot about neighbor night. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't forget about neighbor night because I thought it was really cool. Oh, we love neighbor night. Yes. We, our neighborhood that we lived in for 12 years. Um, yeah. We just, every Monday night had neighbor night. Just got together over a meal and just talked about our lives and we all had very different lives, but we came together and, and that was, that was before we had kids. We it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbor and I just we stopped. Really we was, uh, our, some of our favorite memories. Well, yeah, I think there's just that need, isn't there? I think there everybody's is. looking to be connected. We've never been more connected in some areas and more isolated in other areas, and especially Lexington. You guys have been here longer than us, but it has been it's a community where more and more people are moving in don't have extended family. And there's just this sense of, of isolation. Julie, church-wise, there's some things that we're offering for families this yep, summer. Yep, we do. I have like so many things in front of me. I'm thinking, how do I how do I tell people? But if you, I mean, of course, at Lex City, we've got camp, Windshade Camp. It's a great camp for the summer. Um, and we, I enjoy watching kids do this. I had a, a child once tell me they had just come back from Disney 
And she told her mom, she didn't tell me, she told her mom, that it was better than Disney. Oh, and wow. they had just spent, I don't know, Disney's not cheap, right? And so I was like, sorry about that, but I'm glad she enjoyed it. Um, we always have Kid City Live. So as you're traveling with your kids, if you're traveling, and even if you're not, it's on demand. And so if you want something wholesome, there's lots of other great things too, but it, it's a good jumping off point um, to sit down with your kids and talk about the lessons that we talked about. It, it is a good conversation starter. We're a little bit funny, um, and <laughs> TJ's a little bit funny. I think for your kids, too, as a parent, I mean, this is for your kids a great chance to connect with Julie and TJ, our yeah. folks that are loving your kids and ministering and coming alongside you as parents. And so I encourage you, leverage this resource that your kids get to know these wonderful leaders that we have here at the church. Yep. Uh, they really and build then, that relationship. Yep. And then there's lots in Lexington. Lexington is a great city. I think it's listed as one of the better cities for free things in the community. So you can always look at bulletin boards. But even if you don't want to get involved, even if you just want to do little things with your kids, like park tours, painting rocks. And there's a whole, there's a whole club in Lexington that paints rocks and just hides them around for people to find. It's the cutest thing, right? Geocaching, letterboxing. If you just want to get out of the house, letterboxing is a little more primitive. You don't, but you don't have to have the system, right? The letterbox is you go online, you follow clues, you got to get a little cheap compass. And we did that as a family. My little, my youngest always carried the compass, you know, in the backpack and you did a little rubber stamp. So letterboxing is a great time filler free again it takes you all over different places parks um make cookies play water games do plays we talked about that go on nature walks build a fort make pizzas once a week and everybody make their own pizza play in the sprinklers make an outdoor movie night in your neighborhood yeah. that's a great way to invite neighbors over just get a sheep somebody has a projector or i mean now you can get a little thing with your phone and do a projector um you know it's go ahead Jennifer. Well, I was just going to say too, for those of you that are in the infant and preschool, yeah. you know, infant toddler preschool age, the importance, like what P Pastor Brian said, of building community. Um, I see a lot in the the mommy groups in Lexington, people being, you know, feeling very alone and isolated, and that's just statistically true of the last couple of years in general, but also um, sociologically of that phase of life. So you do kind of draw back because you got to do naps. You you know you can't be out past seven if you're on a schedule and things like that. So build community. And one idea we did this when our girls were younger is I created a preschool co-op. Um, you need to be able to build community to trust people. If you don't have local family, you have to make an effort to build that relationship to where you can trust and then do babysitting swapping or, Hey, like I need a day where I can stay at home and Netflix. Cause I'm with my kids 24 seven. So like send your kids and trust someone, you know, to bring your kids with them. And, and when you have that community, you have someone that you can call and say, Hey, I'm having a day. Cause you're going to have days like that. It's summer. Right. If you're in Lexington, I mean, I don't know if I didn't have water, I would not be happy, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so I'm sure there's a lot of other mm -hmm. people, you know, that don't have pools and are just like, what do we do? Because it's 103 degrees and I'm going to go insane with these toddlers in my house. So really, truly build that community. Um, come to church. It's hard, you know, but reach out. A lot of times if you, you need to create that community for yourself, as hard as that might be sometimes, um, and talk to talk to Julie, talk to the Kids City staff, and we can connect you, oh. you know, and the volunteers, because that's really important, but it does take intention and effort yeah, to do and that. Yeah, and one really easy connect coming up is lunch in the park. I mean, that that's as easy as it gets. Oh, you come and you eat yeah. lunch, you bring all your friends, bring some lawn chairs and hang out. And so, yeah, we're trying to connect people for that reason, because we need each other. Uh, I just thought of one other um, thing. Um, Home Depot has like kids, um, oh, yeah, kids crafts, right. kids project. Um, that the, so they provide them free. You can just go, and I think they do them. Um, it, I think it might almost be on a week weekly, or it, maybe, maybe it's, it's the first week of mm -hmm. the month, or something like that. Um, and you just go pick up the um, the project pack, and then um, they're they're great little um, little projects that you can do. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's so many things. Have ice day. Do everything with ice. Eat breakfast for dinner. Have a backwards day. I mean, there's little things you can do at home. Just if you know what I mean, wake up and do it backwards. You know, there's so many things. And really online, we could list them forever, but there's there's a plethora of things online. If you're just at a loss, I don't know what to do with my kids today. I'm losing my mind. Just go online. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. Yep. Chris, what encouragement would you give maybe to some dads uh, during the summer? Uh, 
just uh, towards it and connecting with the kids, supporting the family. Any thoughts? Um, I, I was watching a TV show one time, and the dad character in the in the show goes, "Being a dad's easy. Ninety percent of the grade is just attendance." And that is something I really try to remind, remind mm-hmm. myself of because I just I have to be there. I was also reading this author, I forget, he's a father, and he's talking about how he, he spent, him and his wife spent so much money on all these, on these fancy trips, and when he looks back, when the kids look back, they talk about the thing they remember most is like wrestling with dad in the bed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I spent all this money, but that's, that's what they remember. And I think back, oh my gosh, it was magical when my dad would show up at like, say my, my mom Wednesday took us to a park and my dad would show up, you know, late cause he was working, he was working a lot and we would just light up. It was amazing. So, uh, gosh, it, I mean, he was only there a couple of days of summer cause he was always working late, but man, when he was there, it just, it made my day. So if you, if you can be there, oh my gosh, it just, it makes the world yep. um, show up kids. and be present. So it's good. Great word. Yeah, no, I, 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 just to, to tag on with that, I think, find a way to share your interests with your kids as well. So if it, if you're um, interested in, if you have an interest in like animals, then um, then go and explore and turn over rocks in the creek and, um, and f- see what's there um, or like whatever it is. Um, so I, I like to do woodworking and so the, the, the girls will come into the, um, into the garage and, and we, um, this summer we'll probably do like project day or, um, something like that, or they'll, um, they'll want to learn how to, um, how to use like hot glue safely or, um, pro- probably they're not interested in the safely part, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but things like that, find, find a way, um, to share time, um, doing something that you enjoy as well. That's a yeah. great word. Well, Julie, closing thoughts for us. These have been some great. In- I had no idea there was so much to do. Oh my gosh! There's and we're gonna put this. Um, we'll put this resource out there a link. But there's there's even a, a summit summer family bucket list. And and I would say create your own. Like Jenna would create her own, but somebody that's maybe busy or doesn't feel like they've got the bandwidth to do it. Somebody's done it for you, right? So you can find them. Um, and it's got QR codes. It'll teach you how to do everything from turning over stones, digging up, get a magnifying glass, you know, go out and like, it's, it's really endless. If, if we just make it simple, it can be simple. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a big word for today. Don't overthink it. Yeah. doesn't take a lot of money. No, it just takes some time, intentional investment and enjoy this summer. These are, they're precious years. They and, are. And uh, they will go. People say it all the time, but it is true. They will go quickly. Your days are long as a parent, but the years are short. True. And so leverage this summer Enjoy some time together again as we at church. Any way that we can come alongside you and support you, yeah. Uh, all of these uh, links will be at the bottom of this podcast. Take advantage of that. So go to visit lexcity.church slash off the record, and you can gain access to all those things. Well, guys, thanks for spending part of your time with us today, and uh, we're looking forward to an amazing summer as families. So, Julie, send us off. Goodbye. Bye. It is all right. <laughs> yeah, thanks again for joining summer, yeah. us on Off the Record. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you.